the morning. Gently rest upon my heart. Can you help me sing this? It goes like this. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. That's all it is. That's all it is. It goes again. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. That's all it is. Come on, let's, let's sing it together. Like the dew in the morning, gently
As we prepare for meditation, let us sit comfortably in whatever space we're in. Once you are comfortable, I want you to take in a deep breath, hold it for the count of four, and then release it. Hold it, one, two, three, four. Release it, four, three, two, one. Again, hold it, one, two, three, four. Release it, four, three, two, one. As you take in these deep breaths, I want you to count and focus your attention on your breathing. Breathe in, one, two, three, four. Breathe out, four, three, two, one. Just relax and take a moment to be by yourself. Think in your mind that there's just bright lights all around you, but they're comforting bright lights. With the light of the divine, I surrender my whole attention to the presence. Think about that. The light of the divine, I surrender my whole attention and just relax in that feeling that you are not alone and you are in a place of peace and comfort. Breathing in and breathing out. Relax, enjoy the moment. For this is a new day. It's a new beginning of a new week. Relax. 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 Think about the goodness of God. Think about the goodness of God. As you sit in the comfort of this light, as you sit in the comfort of his presence, think to yourself, where there is hatred in my heart, let me place it with love. Where there is doubt, let me replace it with faith. Where there is despair, let me place it with hope. Where there is darkness, let me place it with light. And where there is sadness, let me replace it with joy. Just bring love into your heart. Breathe in, slowly breathe out, relax, just relax.
breathing in and breathing out. I want you to think about the words that we've stated before. Where there is hatred in me, let there be love. Where there is doubt, let there be faith. Where there is despair, let there be hope. Where there is darkness, let there be light. And where there is sadness, let me replace all these things with joy. Breathe in and breathe out. Slowly, slowly relax. Remove the tension from your shoulders. Just relax. Open up your mind and your heart. Relax. As you feel the bright light around you, just sit and enjoy it. Feel the warmth of that light. That is love. Feel the comfort of being in the place that you are now. Feel his presence all around you. And just take this time to feel the comfort of these few moments and let them last for the day. And each day, remember the light, the glow, the feeling of comfort. Breathe in and slowly exhale. Breathe in and slowly exhale. There is peace, there is calmness. As you sit in the glow of that light, prepare yourself to hear God's word. Prepare yourself to be a blessing to you and to others by placing yourself in a state of peace and opening your mind to hear his word and to understand his love for you. I want you now again to breathe in Counting to four. One, two, three, four. Exhale. Four, three, two, one. Do this daily, just for a few moments, because we all need 
a few moments to ourselves to take in God's love and understanding. For the last time, I want you to breathe in. Take it through your whole body and exhale. Exhale all stress. Relax, relax, relax. And now bring yourself back to the here and the now. Good morning, Mount Airy family and friends. We are so grateful that you have decided to join us on this morning. We just thank God for our pastor, Dr. Anthony L. Bennett, in his absence. And we are so grateful that even in this hour, we believe that God has a word for God's people. At this time, we'll have a selection for our music ministry. Come on, give God some glory in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We worship you. We honor you, Jesus. We give you glory. Oh, come on, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're able. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you glory. Yeah. Yes, we do, Jesus. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. You, God, is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, 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 oh. He's able. Come on, let me say that again. Hallelujah. God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said. He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Every line doer, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Let's say oh to the Lord. Let me say oh, 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 he's able. Oh, 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 he's able. Oh, 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 he's able. I tried him, and I know that God is a He's able. He's a lily on the valley. He's a bright and morning star. He's able. He's able. 
He's able. He's able. Say God is able. Yes, he is. God is able. Yes, he is. Say God is able. Yes, he is. God is able. Yes, he is. Come on, give God the glory. Give him the praise. Give God the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Say God is able. Yes, he is. God, yes, he is able. Yes, he is. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. Thank you, Jesus. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. He won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. He's able. Lift your hands if you know he's able. Lift your hands if you know he's able. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. And we'll sing hallelujah until we come again. And we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence, dance in your presence. King of glory, King of Glory, feel this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Oh, King of Glory, feel this place. Just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. And we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence, dance in your presence, King of glory, King of glory, feel this place, just want to be with you, we just want to be with you, oh, King of glory, feel this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. As the deer that to fall, the water of my soul long and Sure. 
We thank and praise God for our brother Douglas Charles and our music ministry. We're going to go right into the Word of God, and we'll be coming from the book of Isaiah, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 4, and it reads, Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people. Making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. What will you do on the day of reckoning? When disaster comes from afar, to whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your riches? Nothing will remain but to cringe among the captives or fall among the slain. Yet for all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we thank you for this time and space. Another opportunity to declare your word. God, we pray your blessings upon this message and your messenger. We pray your blessings upon the hearts that will receive and hear your word on today. We give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We know that Isaiah was an 8th century Israelite prophet after whom the book of Isaiah is written. He prophesied during the reign of Isaiah, uh, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. We know that he prophesied for approximately 64 years. And from his youth, although he may not have necessarily lived it, he knew the face of poverty and the greed of the wealthy. He was easily acquainted with the unprotected, the widowed, the orphaned, with the dispossessed, the homeless, the victims of stolen land. He witnessed lives destroyed by the lack of resources and continual gluttony of the rich. Yes, Isaiah, we are told, was acquainted with those who poured misery on the least of these through discriminatory laws and unjust judges and irresponsible leaders. Sounds all too familiar. His eyes were open to, an equ to inequalities and evils of a society that failed to recognize the humanity in all of God's people. And according to biblical accounts, Isaiah came in contact with God through God's divine glory and God's holiness. And although within himself, he felt his own inadequacies. He heeded God's call saying, here I am, God send me. Isaiah declares woe to the proud oppressors. These verses declare woe, woe to the powers that continued to oppress the people of God. And today, there is still an evilness in our society that continues to show up as murderers of black and brown bodies. Its venom shakes us to our very core. It has no respect of person. It doesn't care about your education nor your wealth your name, your age, your sexual orientation, or your faith. None of that matters. It cannot be rooted out, plucked out, just by sheer will. It has sustained over generations. It cannot be loved into submission, reasoned with, 
or convinced of our humanity. No, not this type of evil. Isaiah witnessed this systemic injustice and this evil in his own time and cried out, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, O oh God. We too have those same angst and frustrations. We have anxiety whenever our children are out of our sight, when our partners are taking a run or a simple trip to the store whether they put on a hoodie or legally carry a gun, because what we do know is at the end of the day, even if they got it all right, their black skin doesn't matter in the sight of evil. Their black skin is the only thing that evil sees. I know that this is hard to hear on a Sunday morning, I, I too can't wait to create a world where I no longer have anxiety over our black boys listening to music too loud or wearing their pants too low or playing in the park or going out to eat with friends or making simple bad decisions in a particular moment or driving down the street. But until then, we will fight to create a space, a space where there is no fear of something bad happening to them while they're out of our sight. Church, we have a duty to defend the life, the beauty of black life. We have a responsibility to our future scientists and lawyers, and doctors, inventors, and writers, and musicians, and artists, and rappers, and creators. What does God require of us? Isaiah 58 says, God requires. It says to loose the chain of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, to, a, to set the oppressed free, and to break every yoke. Then it goes on to say, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? It is our responsibility as believers to be that voice in the wilderness. It is our responsibility to be the prophetic witness. It is our responsibility to the bands of the wicked. It is our responsibility to let the oppressed go free. But I know too, it is hard to believe that we can do it. It is hard to believe all the trauma that has been inflicted on us generation after generation. We grow weary in well-doing. But we cannot become too pessimistic to think anything will change. We are too pessimistic to think that anything will change. Then we mind as well not just shut the doors of the church, as is so often thrown out there, but shut down our own social media platforms, cancel our brand, shut down our podcast, because they have a, become a way for us to, re, to erect the change that we are charged to create. And let me say that again. If we have become too pessimistic to think that anyone will change, anything will change, then we might as well, like that is thrown out there so freely to close the church doors, then we might as well cancel our social media platforms, then we might as well cancel our brands, then we might as well cancel our podcasts, because that too 
become a way for you not to re-erect the change that God has charged us to create. We understand that we get weary, but we do understand the power that is still in the name of God. We still understand the charge that's given to each of us. We understand. We must move past trying to figure out why they just don't get it. We must move past what they said on news station. We must move past, well, I thought they was my friend. We must move past all those things that we have grown so weary in sharing. We already recognize it. We recognize it, the familiarity of the stench that fills our nostrils as it does God's. We recognize it in their questions that they ask on our jobs. We recognize it when, we, when they reach to touch our hair. We recognize it when they inquire as to why they simply didn't put their hands up, lie face down on the ground, shut up and dribble, say yes ma'am and no ma'am and no sir and yes sir, while they point a gun in our face. We recognize them in our children's classrooms, on our jobs, in hiring panels, in courtrooms, in police uniforms, in black robes, and leading our communities as elected officials. They are comfortable being an enemy to our community and to our children. All too familiar are the ones who our grandparents warned us about. After 64 years, Isaiah must have gotten tired seeing no repentance, seeing no change. For us, still another bitter cup of grief and sorrow and anger and rage which won't leave our lips. And we know that if $12 million, taxpayers dollars that is, for training and 26 years worth of experience still doesn't prevent you from killing our babies in the street, then the system in place will never work. Reforming old systems and op of oppression is not designed to work. That is why Georgia and many other states set out to put in place other mechanisms for voter oppression because a beautiful sister like Stacey Abrams took the key and unlocked the door and to the hearts of God's people showing them that they were more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly even what they thought of themselves. We have a mandate to fight against death-dealing forces. We have a mandate to fight. You might say, for how long? And I say, until they are defeated, never to rise again. Yes, we will remember their names, Ahmad and Oscar and Dante and Sandra and Rashad and Corey and Trayvon and Mike and uh, Botham and Atiana and Christian and Brianna and George and countless others. Yes, we will remember their names. But we shall also remember that these are the black bodies that Martin and Malcolm spoke of, that Sojourner fought for. These are the ones that August Wilson and Alice Walker and James Baldwin and Zora Neale Hurston that they wrote for, that Angela Maya Angelou and Langston told stories about. These are the ones that R.G. Lord and uh, Lorraine Hansberry wrote about, those that Nina Simone and Tupac and even DMX rapped about. These are the ones that Brian Stevenson and Michelle Alexanders and countless others still advocate for. What is it going to take? That inward fortitude to continue to run this race. Whatever we have to do to negate the atrocities committed against our brothers and our sisters and our children and those who have yet to be. Because Paul writes in Ephesians, 
have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted about what they say and what we see, but expose them at every turn. And as Anna Tubbs writes in her book, The Three Mothers, she said, although much has been written about Alberta's son, Martin, and Louise's son, Malcolm, and Burtis Baldwin's son, James, little has been talked about the mothers who raised them their ancestors, those that came before them. These mothers passed their knowledge to their children with the hope of helping them to survive in a society that would deny their humanity. These women drew from their own experiences, their own pain, their own hurt to push their children towards greatness. Louise taught her children about their activist roots. And Burtis encouraged James to express himself through his writing. And Alberta centered her lessons in faith and social justice, all with a conviction that they, just like every human being, deserved dignity and respect despite the disregard and disdain and evil that, would ultimately, that they would ultimately face. But like these mothers, so many other mothers and fathers have dreams and visions for their children. They have hopes and desires that their children will have children and they would have children and they would be scientists and lawyers, that they will preach the gospel, that they will laugh, that they will enjoy music, that they will write poetry, that they will rap. Mothers and fathers who have dreams of their own babies. And I came here this morning to tell you one simple thing. Our sons and our daughters will dream dreams and they will cross those lines and break barriers and they will walk stages and receive diplomas and degrees and accolades that they so deserve. Our sons and daughters will play in parks and hang out with friends and make juvenile mistakes and live to tell about it. Our mothers will no longer sit and worry about having the black skin talk with their babies or carry the fear that comes when their 16 year old gets their first license. Our mothers will no longer have to fear their children playing their music too loud. No, our sons and daughters will be the greatness that their ancestors prayed for, envisioned, dreamed about. The creative geniuses, the artistry that rolls from their tongue, from the tips of their pen, their beautiful black minds will be free to create and to be. But until then, we will continue to turn our cameras on. Until then, we will wait in countless hours for countless hours to vote. Until then, we will pack courtrooms, demand justice, stand on the front lines, feed our poor, break down every barrier that is built to divide us. Until then, we will continue demanding that fathers get justice for years separate, separated from their families, wrongly convicted and imprisoned. Until then, we will dispel stereotypes sent to define us, sent to divide us, because it is our responsibility to recognize the divine in every black boy and every black girl. Until then, we will fight to tear down oppressive systems and not reform systems that never have the ability to be reformed, no matter how much money you invest. Because until then, we will hear the beckoning of the drums of our ancestors beating in our hearts. Until then, we will walk in a room and smell a sweet, familiar smell and know that they have been here. Until then, we will see them in our dreams. 
Until then, we will hear the sound of their voice in the distance. Until then, we will hear the communal call that lives in our black bodies, calling for us to fight, calling us to run on just a little while longer. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, we on you unto this day, continue to encourage our heart and our minds and our spirits. God, when we grow weary in well-doing, God, strengthen us with the memory of our ancestors and all those that have come before us. And God, as we walk in journey towards justice, help us to realize that we do not go alone. Help us to realize that we stand on the shoulders of all of those generation after generation that have come before us. Help us to realize, God, that you, God, are with us. Help us to realize that you will come like a mighty wind. And God, I pray now that we will continue, rest if we must, but that we will continue on trusting you and trusting that justice for all of our black boys and girls, all of our children, justice will come. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. And God, we still know that power is yours. And it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Mount Airy. Let us prepare that we might commune together. And we take this bread that represents the body of Christ the one who died for you and I, and we eat together to Jesus. We take this juice and we remember the blood that was shed and we say to Jesus. so grateful for our pastor, Dr. Anthony L. Bennett, who has allowed me to stand in his stead on this morning. We pray God's continual blessings upon he and his family. And we pray God's blessings upon you, Mount Airy family and friends. We thank you because you could have been many places this morning, but because you decided to be with us, we don't take that for granted and we don't take it lightly. And we thank and praise God for each of you. And just know that we will continue to pray for you. We will continue to be in community, trusting that God is more than able. So by way of announcements, we would like for you to join us in keeping all of our bereaved families in your prayers. Uh, Catherine Sargent, Melissa Sargent, Liz Powell, uh, Victor Squire, Patrell Thompson, Dontre Sargent, Dunbar, Rohan Mosby, Brandon Torti, they lost their sister and aunt, Bonnie Caribe. We continue to keep up Margot in our prayers and the loss of her sister-in-law, Marie Black. So these are the names we know, but I'm sure that there are others. So continue to keep all of our bereaved families in your prayers as we will continue to join together in that prayer. By way of reminders, if you would like to join, please go to our website and you can go on and join that way. Register um, for I Remember Mama T event. We know that is on May 8th. And if you need any updated information, go to our website. Um, our administrative assistant continues to update the website so you have that information there. We wanna thank you, Mount Airy, for trusting God with your finances. 
you continue to show yourself faithful. And we are so grateful to each of you. Today, 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 the COVID vaccine first shot will be held from 12 to 3 p.m. If you have decided, if you have decided to get the vaccine and have not yet had an opportunity or have made an appointment, you may still be able to get your first shot today. Please call us at 203-334-2757 to schedule your appointment. And that is today from 12 p.m. till 3 p.m. The Monitor My Health for ages 60 and up is a 26 week session. Um, there is limited space on, it is on a first come first serve basis. You will receive a scale and use of a computer if needed. With the help of a certified life skill coach and group that will support you, you can live a healthy lifestyle. They will help us and to lose weight, to lower cholesterol, cholesterol, lower our blood sugar, blood pressure. So come on out, make sure you register for that. Our Bible study series with Dr. Willie Jennings and Dr. Melinda Contreras Bird are on April 21st and April 28th at noon. So please join us. You will not be disappointed. Mount Airy, we thank you. We thank God for you. Continue to visit our website for all updated information. We look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. God bless you, God keep you, and God smile, may God smile his face upon you.